Hello, Sector Watchers. Welcome to this 10th episode of Sector Spotlight on Tuesday, the 3rd of December. This is your weekly update on sector rotation and anything remotely connected to sectors, relative strength and or rotational analysis. My name is Julius de Campenaar and I am your host for today's show. With me, as usual, are Zach and Rachel for technology, mental and moral support. This show is live and interactive, so do not hesitate to participate in the online chat. If you're too shy or prefer other ways of communicating, email, social media channels are open 24 seven. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sector Spotlight. And as you may have figured out by now, it is the first Tuesday of the month, last month of this year, time flies when you're having fun, I was gonna say. And what we're going to do today means uh, monthly charts. So we're gonna go over uh, a quick overview of what has happened in the last month in the various asset classes and sectors. Then we'll be browsing through a number of monthly charts and I'll include a few RRGs and other stuff that I can fit in in that first roughly 15 minutes of the show. Then we'll have a break. We'll have at least one question that came in, but I hope that you um, will treat us with some more in the chat box. And then um, for today's pair trade idea, I've been looking at the healthcare sector, but that's only later on. Let's bring up some charts here. On the left-hand side, we have the perf chart of asset classes as we are following it. And on the right-hand side is the accompanying relative rotation graph, the RRG. Um, I have set the time for this perf chart to 22 days because that's the number of trading days that we had in November. And I have shifted it one day back because if you, if you look here, if I select it, you can see that 22, 22 days from now means 31st of October, 2nd of December. Oh, as a matter of fact, I should make that 21 days. There you go, 21 days. 31st of October, 29th of November. Um, what we see is a stellar performance for the S&P 500 for equities, followed by real estate, the dollar index been doing pretty well, and then we have some fixed income stuff. And on the far right, we have Unfortunately, once again, the commodities and a little bit less the real estate sector that being really, really bad. If we put this into a relative perspective, we're going to click on the Vanguard Balanced Index Fund. That's the black column that we see here. That's a 60-40, 60% stocks, 40% fixed income balanced fund, which is used by a lot of RIAs as a benchmark. And then we'll see that this is, this is pretty daunting. Um, Stocks were pretty much the only or worthy asset class that you needed to be in to outperform over the last month. Look at, look at um, uh, real estate uh, bonds, actually government bonds and, and commodities. They're, they're un they've been underperforming um, that balanced, in, uh, balanced index fund uh, by a mile. Um, if we look at the RRG that goes with it, it shows somewhat similar picture. Um, I got five weeks of performance here five, four weeks, about a month. Um, we see that S&P 500 is still very, very lonely inside the leading quadrant. It's good news for stocks. Um, we lost a little bit momentum over the last month, but nothing really bad. Um, the fixed income stuff, high yield, government bonds, uh, corporate bonds, they're all inside lagging and real estate is rapidly approaching there. And the, the real dog in this asset class uh, rotation graph is commodities because it, it was doing pretty well. It looked as if it was going to pick up, but then it started to roll over and it's now very rapidly heading towards the lagging quadrant again. So um, uh, serious doubts and worries about commodities. Let's do the same exercise for the US sectors. And that is here. That needs to be 21 days. And we'll shift that one day back. So we got end of month to end of month. And we'll stick in the RRG for the various asset classes <clears throat> here. In absolute terms, no surprise, a very good month for stocks with technology leading uh, at five point, almost 5.4%, financials at 5%, healthcare at 5%. And then we taper off with industrials, communication services, 
uh, materials, energy staples. And then we had two sectors with a negative return this month, real estate and utilities. We put that into perspective, we tick the box of the S&P 500, and then we'll see that um, real estate and utilities are the real underperformers. Uh, we got a lot here, like discretionary staples, energy, materials, and then the, the leading sectors for this month are found on the left. It's technology, financials, healthcare, and industrials. Um, I have set up a slide because those of you who have been following the show for a while now, uh, maybe remember that we did that um, doing the sector rotation model using the beta of the various sectors. And what I did is I, I have put the beta for every sector on this RRG. And I thought it was an interesting exercise to see what was going on. And what you can see is that the high betas, let's say the, the, the ones that are well above, a hundred, uh, well above one, are inside leading. Industrials is rolling over. We're going to take a look at that later on. Um, that is not the best one, but financials and especially technology, high beta stocks supporting uh, a rally in the market. And then we see the low beta stocks, especially utilities and real estate, um, now actually moving into the lagging quadrant. And there is only one inside lag, well, two. Um, by the way, uh, XLC, communication services, is the, ones that, is the one that is turning up. And materials, XLB, is the one that's turning down. XLB is the one with 104, and XLC is the one which is like the market with a beta of one. Um, XLE energy is the outlier, I'd say. That is the highest beta. And you know, given a high beta and a market that's going up, one would expect that sector to, uh, to be at least a lot further to the right and traveling in the northeastern direction. That's not the case, unfortunately. Um, so it is what it is. The market is still going higher. We got three seriously uh, heavyweight sectors with financials, technology, and to a lesser extent, industrials inside leading. Um, for me, this is still a, uh, a bullish constellation from a sector rotation perspective with, uh, I think, two exceptions, energy at 1.4, far on the left. And we see a very rapid rise now of the healthcare sector at 0.7 beta, but it is improving very rapidly. And it's only a matter of time before it crosses over into the leading quadrant. Back to the charts here. Um, let's quickly move over a few of the monthly charts. Well, I got them here in my chart list. And let's look at the monthlies for treasury bonds. Uh, and this one I like to see at a unadjusted basis because it shows very well that the 114 level was tested. Uh, it, it failed a break and it's becoming a, a even heavier um, resistance level to break. So keep an eye on that one. If that breaks, it's very bullish, but I am really getting doubts whether that is possible, um, especially on the shorter term time frames. IEF is not uh, the best one around anymore. Let me bring up that RG to better put that in perspective. IEF is right here inside lagging and moving further to the left. Back to our charts here. This is um, corporate bonds. Still doing pretty good. Uh, also here on an unadjusted basis, you will see that it has broken above a horizontal resistance level. So within the fixed income ETFs on this plot, I, I like corporate bonds the best because it is actually breaking above a, uh, a, ho a horizontal resistance. And that was a, a trading range that was in place since, let's say, roughly 2012. So this, this should give you um, a, a pretty good opportunity for the next couple of weeks, maybe even months. S&P 500, um, a weak start of the month of December, but on our monthly charts, we concentrate on the last bar, and that was actually a very bullish bar. We almost closed at an all-time high. There is nothing negative on this one. And I think if you look at um, where this market could, well, if we have a pullback, if we see a pullback, I think that 300 level in SPY, about 3,000 in the S&P 500 is the level to watch. 
Um, and even then, you know, you could even go to like 280 without harming this massive uptrend that we've been seeing um, since 2009 or allegedly um, it ended here. We had a consolidation and we started a new uptrend. There's basically two camps here. Um, but, you know, whatever camp you are, you should be bullish right now because we just broke the new all time highs. And that last monthly bar um, is telling you a bullish story for stocks. Real estate. Uh, again, this is one of the asset classes that you may want to look at uh, unadjusted. And then you see that it is struggling with that overhead resistance level in the 94, 95 area. We had a little bit of a peak above it, but then we dropped back. So it's struggling to get higher. And we see on the RRG that it is actually losing a lot of relative power and heading towards the lagging quadrant. And I, quite frankly, I don't see this changing uh, very, very rapidly. So I, I, I assume that continuing this uh, clockwise rotation, VNQ or the real estate sector will very soon end up inside the lagging quadrant. Move on to the dollar index that is sort of neutral. We still are moving higher, but not with a lot of momentum. So we'll have to wait and see what's going to happen there. And um, here is commodities. It's still inside that long range. I, I was hoping, I was expecting, I was looking for maybe a little bit of a bounce here um, that happened like two months ago. And then in November, we dropped back and we're, we're basically you know, at the same level for this day in, in December. Um, it can still happen, but I, I'm sorry. I mean, this is, it's a dog. And um, you gotta be very careful with this. If it breaks lower, then, then we have real trouble. Uh, if we move higher, I think that we'll have plenty of time to address that issue in the show as it happens. High yields doing pretty well. Unadjusted, we will see high yields somewhere sideways. So not as good as uh, LQD corporate bonds. So high yield uh, lagging, I, as I said, uh, corporate bonds, the best bet inside the um, fixed income area. And then this is the one that we had. Let's quickly move on to some of our US sectors. Monthly charts, I want to charge for sectors, ETFs monthly. Here you go. This is SPY, we've seen that. And we have materials, sort of okay, struggling with overhead resistance inside the RRG. We hooked back down, so there is a negative sign from the RRG chart on materials. Um, that doesn't support a break higher on the chart here. Uh, this is a monthly chart again. So uh, be careful with that uh, A, what is this? Um, 60, 60, like 59 and a half, 60. A difficult area for materials. And then we have communications, which is better, not fantastic, but better. It broke to new highs and we're now pulling back. So uh, if we can hold this, support area around 50, 50, 51, um, then communication services should start to rally uh, relatively soon um, to continue this uptrend and then maybe continue the rotation towards improving and into leading again. We move to energy, as we saw that, that is the one far on the left and turning back. Um, high beta, not the biggest sector uh, in the universe, so it's not a, it's not a massive impact on the S and P 500. Uh, com completely uh, de dis dis uh, disengaged, uh, disconnected is the word that I was looking for uh, from the rest of of the uh, the group rolling back over. So I'd be very very careful with this uh, energy sector. Uh, the monthly chart doesn't give me any clue. It's like inside bars all over. Financials, that is something that is a lot more interesting. It's inside the leading quadrant. You see it's rolling over a little bit, but this is only one day of, um, of price value. So if we move back to the end of the week, then we see sort of a horizontal. Um, but what I really do like is the fact that we broke the new highs. We're now pulling back. So this old resistance level between say 28, 29, that should now start to act as support. Um, any Bottom forming on shorter term timeframes for XLF, I'd say that is a new buying opportunity. 
for a further rotation into the leading quadrant and an outperformance over the S&P 500. We go to industrials, then we saw that that one was rolling over. That's a hook down there. Um, sort of similar with uh, financials, although financials are a little bit stronger, but industrials broke out to new highs, managed to close at a high in November, and it's now coming down. So here also, we need to see support in the 77, 50, 78 area to hold up um, for this sector to actually uh, materialize that break and continue higher. And if that happens fast enough, then we'll see this tail here uh, gradually move further to the right and gain on the RS ratio axis and continue its uh, relative uptrend against the S&P 500. We do technology. Technology, there's nothing bad with technology. Still not. It rotated. As we all know, it rotated from leading into weakening, jiggled a little bit and then came back up into leading a couple of weeks ago, and it is now inside leading, traveling at a northeastern direction, RRG heading roughly around, I think, 40 degrees, which is pretty good, and we are still um, at, well, almost all-time highs, not nearly all-time highs, but, you know, keep this sector in mind. It's, uh, it's actually doing very, very well. Staples, different ball game rotating into the lagging quadrant the the bar chart the price chart still pretty good but the relative picture is the one that is a little bit uh worrisome um not surprising strong market underperformance for low beta defensive sector so this is underscoring the uh actually the bullish outlook for the s p 500 I'm almost there we got real estate on the monthly chart again you know um the bar chart doesn't look if you look at this chart in isolation, you'd say, hey, there's nothing wrong with, with real estate. That's actually pretty good. It's going higher, it's moving higher, no problem. Um, but on a relative time, relative perspective, from a relative perspective, this is one of the weaker sectors. Uh, low bad ad defensive uh, confirms a, uh, or, or, or um, supports a bullish case for the S&P 500. Still, we'll have to see. It's, it's December, we, this, a lot can happen, but for the time being, the end of November was bullish for stocks and that's how we enter the month of December, three more to go. Utilities, again, fairly strong. What, what, not fairly strong, very strong bar chart, you know, monthly chart, you know, higher highs, higher lows, not one sign of a correction in sight, but look at the position on the RRG. Still in sight weakening, but very, very close to crossing over into the lagging quadrant. Uh, and that simply means that there are other sectors inside the S&P 500 that are rising more rapidly than utilities and real estate at the moment. And then finally we have, oh, one more, healthcare. That's the one that we're gonna dive in a little bit deeper later on. Um, super strong performance over the last couple of weeks. It actually hooked back up, was inside improving, went through a little bit of a corrective move and then hooked back up. As you all know, when we put this on a daily chart, you'll see a nice clockwise rotation. You see an acceleration since the last observation and the price chart here. Um, we can call this, you know, like a triangle or a pennant or whatever formation you want to call it. But it was a consolidation that lasted almost all of 2019. And we broke out of it with a bang and we're now moving higher. So this is a sector that is very likely to join uh, technology, industrials and financials inside the leading quadrant very, very soon. Last one, consumer discretionary. Where are you, consumer discretionary? Well inside lagging. Again, uh, you know, look at this chart in isolation, not a problem at all. Strong charts, strong move, higher highs, higher lows, almost at all time highs. But there are other sectors inside the S&P 500 that are doing much better. Um, so X or Y inside the lagging quadrant. We are going to take a quick break and then we'll be back with some questions if there are any, otherwise I've got one over the mail. And then we're going to have a uh, sort of a deep dive and a pair trade idea inside the healthcare sector. Stay with us. And 
we're back. You guys are all so engaging. Zero questions. I am starting to wonder whether that's me or all those people online are just too shy. I don't know. I mean, you, you guys have, you have no problem with sending me an email. That's super fine. But it would be so much more fun if we could do it interactive and live. Otherwise, I'm going to record this show and not do it live. Um, anyway, that's <laughs> just joking. Um, I did get a question coming in. And the question was on the, um, um, when the values for weekly RRGs are calculated, is it using all five days in the week or is it using the, the, um, the weekly close? And the answer is it's using the weekly close. Um, the best way to compare it is with a, with a, line, with a weekly line chart. Um, let me quickly bring one up. Let's, uh, let's just do XLK, XLK here. Uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna set this to a line chart, a solid line update. So here you see a weekly line chart. Now each observation is a weekly close. This is quite interesting because here, this is, this is a weekly close. So this is the 2nd of December. So this is yesterday's close. If we would, if we would update this, um, to, well, this is, this is yesterday's close. So this, this is Monday. So you can see that this 25th of November, that was Monday of last week, goes to the 2nd of December, which is yesterday. That last observation is fluid. So five more days and that lived that last, that last close can move around. Um, so if, if XLK would actually say close at 88 or 89, we wouldn't see this dip. It, it, it just moves from 25, boom, to there. And the same for, uh, for the RRG. So this, this last observation here, so this is 25th of November. It's, it's, the week, it's a little bit confusing because it says ending November 25th. It's actually the week um uh ending is the it was the um 30th 29th 30th so so this is the monday uh of that week the point is that that last observation on that tail that is fluid this can still move around during the week depending on the closes that come in and it's the same as with this one so i hope that that is now um clear um same person asked the question the uh the shortcuts for splitting the screen that's actually uh control left and control right on your keyboard or command left so now it's here i do now windows key left and now it snaps on the left hand side of my screen and if i would do the same on the right it will snap to the right hand side of my screen that's a question that always comes back it's nothing to do with stock charts there's nothing to do with technical analysis. It's just a Windows thingy. Anyway, um, we have seen that the healthcare sector is um, rapidly improving, had a very strong hook there. Let's look at the daily version of that rotation real quick. Where is my, and here you see the daily rotation that lengthened it. And you see that this is what caused, this was so fast, this rotation here, that caused that hook on the weekly. Nevertheless, no doubt about it, that healthcare is now a very strong sector. Now for my pair trade idea for this week, I wanted to look into the healthcare sector and see if I could come up with um, two stocks inside the same sector um, and combine them as a, um, as a pair trade idea. Um, <clears throat> I, got, I actually got quite a few mails about how people uh, work with pair trades, uh, how they look at it, um, uh, discussion about pair trades versus long short, whether that was the same or not. For me, there is not a significant difference between, or there is actually no difference between a long short or a pair, pair trade strategy. Uh, some say pairs, pairs should be in the same sector or highly correlated. Um, so you're batting that mean reversion principle. Um, for me, it's a long and a short, and, and I like my longs to go high fast, and I like my shorts to 
decline fast. Uh, the reason why you put them together is to basically hedge your market risk. If we do that inside the healthcare sector, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to mitigate, we're going to um, uh, we're going to hedge the risk for that sector and basically for the market. Now, there are way too much stocks inside the healthcare sector uh, to go over all of them. Um, what I did do is I created quickly for this show a an RRG with the top. 10, I believe, um, symbols in weight, uh, just to have a look at the general rotation. And this is sort of biased to the right, which is what I would expect because it is a one of the leading sectors and one of the a strong performers. So I would like to see the, 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 the big names, the heavyweights, uh, more positioned more towards the right. And that's actually happening. There's a few that are either in weakening and two that are inside lagging, but they're predominantly on the right. And you see that even better when you when you change the um, the symbol to dollar one instead of XLV, and then you see that is all shifted to the right. Now there are a lot of stocks um, inside the healthcare sector that are uh, on a on a big run and made big big moves and are popping up very strongly on uh, on the RRGs, but I didn't really like to actually chase them because then you're actually running behind uh, those big moves. And, and um, you know, uh, I, from a trading perspective, I don't think that is uh, desirable. You know, Amgen is one of these stocks. You know, you just, you just don't want to buy this right now. It's just went too, too fast, too far. Look at it from a relative perspective. It's super nice. We just broke out of that out of that long four or five year range. So I do believe that from a relative perspective, Amgen is absolutely a buy inside the sector. Um, I'm, I expect this to do really, really well. But you know, if we, we, we just want to have a little bit more oomph, a little bit more um, uh, juice in our trades, then this one is, is going too fast or has gone too fast and you should actually wait for it to drop back. There's a ton of these stocks that I actually uh, found and that made it difficult to find my long. So I decided to stick for my long with XLV. So I'm going to buy the, the ETF. So I'm going to buy the whole sector, but I'm going to put two, um, two stocks as shorts. And the first one is IDXX. And I got to be quick now. IDXX, that is inside lagging and moving there, moving further into it, and ZTS. That is Zutis, and that is inside weakening. And if we quickly look at that, well, there is no time for that anymore. Um, but the, the idea that I had, and I'm going to write it up in a blog article following this show. Um, so the idea that I actually had is to be at a long healthcare and then 50% short IDEX and 50% short of Zutis. So we have a three legged pair trade with the sector as a long position, and we're going to eliminate IDEX and Zutis from that position to outperform the, um, uh, the healthcare sector. Anyway, this was the 10th episode of Sector Spotlight. Thank you for watching. Please don't be a stranger and stay in touch. I hope to see you back next week, same day, same time. Sector Spotlight airs every Tuesday, 10.30 to 11 a.m. Eastern. And meanwhile, if you want to read more about sectors and RRGs, please go to the RRG blog on stockcharts.com or even better, subscribe using the link below each article to make sure you will receive a nudge every time a new article is posted. See you next week.